Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. More people are arriving even as we speak. I'll go ahead and let them in. Um, this is a great turnout. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to um, the Siren Nation Speaks uh, Collage Explorations Workshop. Uh, my name is Anina Bennett, and I am on the board of Siren Nation. And we just have a couple of quick housekeeping uh, items and a welcome before I turn it over to our wonderful artist, Peggy. Just to let you know, Siren Nation is a 501c3 nonprofit that is based in Portland, Oregon. And our mission is to promote and empower women artists and artists of all marginalized genders, as well as to build community and to inspire and empower people to make their own art. So this workshop, I think, is going to be a great example of that. Um, and for all of you who are joining us as participants, you are welcome to leave your cameras on if you want to. If you're not comfortable leaving, camera, uh, leaving cameras on, that's fine, too. Um, this will be interactive. and. You're welcome to um, ask questions uh, either you know, live on mic or put them in the chat and I will be keeping an eye on the chat for, uh, for Peggy. And with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Peggy for Collage Explorations. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome. I hope you're all having a good Sunday so far, um, wherever you are in the world. I know we have some people from the East Coast joining in today. Uh, so, on the screen, you see some kind of crazy collage uh, groupings. Each quadrant, uh, or each grouping of four, I should say, are what I call non-committal or ephemeral collages. Um, and I think this is a perfect way to start this out because I don't want anyone to have any judgment today. I don't want you to beat yourself up or be anxious or afraid to participate because this is one of the simplest things you can do. There is really no preparation. Even if you came completely unprepared, you can be prepared in like two minutes. So what a non-committal collage is, or I also like to call it ephemeral because they are not lasting. They are very, very temporary, which takes the pressure off of making a final piece of art. That's always so daunting to see a white page and ah, what do I do with it, right? So um, if you haven't already, gathered nine random pieces of scrap paper or I don't even know, like whatever little bits. Let's see what I have. Um, Anina, if you can now pin my table. And we apologize, it's upside down. We tried, we tried, I can't figure it out. It's my first time doing an online Zoom workshop. So before I left my house today, I went around my studio. I have a bin that I use all the time and I'll show that, but this is what I grabbed in one minute, just scurrying through my studio. So here's some random stuff. Um, like, I don't know what this thing is, right? What is that? It's a piece of metal. There's some string. There's some feather. This is a piece of wood. Tea bag. Uh, dropper. Um, little thing of leads. A piece of sandpaper. A little cute plastic fork. It's adorable. Um, so as you see, like whatever. Netting from some sort of vegetable. Uh, bottle cap that was wanting to be something more than that. Um, Anyway, broken speed. So these are kinds of things that you can gather and we can do our ephemeral collages. Or if you already have scraps of paper, oh, I'm dropping stuff on the ground. Oh, you can also use nature. So I'm sure many of you have been on a hike and you see a leaf and a rock and some moss and maybe you would adjust it in such a way and you snap a photo of it. That is an ephemeral collage from nature. So. You've done this before and I know you can do it now. So here's my bin that I use all the time. Um, I did a hundred day project where this was the bin I used. I've added to it since then. And every day I made a set of four collages. That's what those samples were from. Uh, drawing nine pieces from this bin every day. And then I'd make one collage with all nine pieces and then three extra collages using at least every piece once. But you can repeat pieces, you can do what you want. Sometimes like a collage could just be two elements. So I want you to embrace that. So if you have nine pieces selected, I'm just jumping right in. Do you like how I did that? There was like, just get your feet wet. Um, I'm gonna just randomly pick and I'm not gonna look. I'm gonna look at the other computer so you can see if you can see my face in the gallery view at all. I will have my eyes closed. So get your nine pieces ready. You can walk around your house really quick and find some stuff. They don't have to go together. That's not the point. Everything goes together. If it's in your house, especially, right? Because you've curated those things, even the garbage came in the mail, whatever. 
And I'm gonna to reach to the side here and grab one of my objects that I had in my other pile. Probably won't get back to the studio, but that's all right. <laughs> I was losing count, I'm gonna count. I have to open my eyes to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need two more. One, two, okay. So I've selected my nine pieces. I hope you have some nine random bits, flat, three-dimensional, whatever, all works. And this requires no scissors, no glue. Um, I just sometimes, I just lay them out and that's my first collage. It's like how I see what I have. I might shift them around a little bit as I'm laying them out. You will not be gluing these down. This is not about making a masterpiece, especially the first one. The first one is more like seeing what you were given, what the universe decided you should pick for this project. <clears throat> I know you think you picked it, but you did not. The universe, the universe guided your hand. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I have two more pieces here. So I do have my nine pieces. And let's see. Ooh, that's an interesting piece. All right, and so I'm just gonna slightly rearrange them to make them a little more pleasing to my eye, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. And also don't forget, every piece has two sides. So even though you saw an object as one way, you know, maybe I want it that side showing instead. And look, it's three dimensional. So it gets a little, you know, I can add some shadows to my pieces. And let's do that and incorporate that like that, maybe. All right, I feel like that is a nice nine piece composition upside down for you. Maybe I can do this, look. Do, 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 do. Old school meets new school. <laughs> So now you're seeing it how I saw it. All right. I hope everyone had fun with that. Are you finished with your collage? You can unmute yourself and let me know how you're doing. And yeah. we'll flip back. All right. And I did start teaching workshops out of my home right before the pandemic. Um, and the beautiful thing about when you come to my house for a workshop, which hopefully will happen again maybe next year, um, I supply with you with all the bits. You get to choose from my several random bits boxes that I have around my house um, and also from my magazine collection. All right, so now I'm going to look at all the pieces. I'm going to make three more collages. This whole exercise from start to finish of like picking your pieces to the end really should only take you 15 minutes, no more. Um, if it's taking you longer, don't worry just stop thinking and move forward. Um, a lot of times as artists, we get in our own way by thinking. And I have to tell you, um, every time I think when I create, I make something I don't like at all. When I just go for it and let my, my day or my week or just whatever, like all the energy, whether it's negative or positive, come out of my body and onto the page, whether it be just with random bits of paper that I don't even glue down or if it's a painting. Um, we have to get out of our own darn way for sure. All right, so now I'm gonna move quickly and I just like to grab some stuff that I think might work together color-wise. Um, that's funny that that's an airplane ticket, huh? I have not gone anywhere on an airplane in a long time. I know some people have, but that is not my comfort zone yet. <clears throat> All right, but I think anyone who is willing to travel and help out the airlines deserves a gold ribbon. And I know my neighbor works for Alaska, so I'm highlighting that because he says during the pandemic, they were good to work for. And we're just gonna point off to the side, like we don't know where we're going. <laughs> so that is another random collage. I'll turn it around for you. And, and it's gone. No big deal if it was terrible, right? And who's saying it's terrible anyway? That was my terrible brain saying that. Um, one, once again, we all need to get out of our way and telling ourselves that we're not good enough. It's not the way to do that. All right, so this was actually a photograph and ATC I made a long time ago. So I'm gonna use that. I did not have that piece. 
All right. I always like to keep the pieces I used aside so as to not get confused. Um, let's see. I'm now on my second collage, just kind of moving quickly. Oh, I did have this piece, didn't I? Ooh, see, and then this is kind of interesting because then I can tuck that and give it a little interest. And things that are always centered aren't always the best. So let's do it a little off too. And voila, number two, super quick. I always grab some sort of art kit to go, especially when I have somewhere I know I have to wait, like at the hair salon or the doctor's office. Sometimes it is just a little envelope with scraps of paper. And I sit there and make collages on the table in the waiting room. And I use my cell phone to photograph them. Oh, I forgot to tell you that. If you did want to save them, you could photograph them. Um, I think that was in the uh, information when you signed up. Um, but I kind of like that sometimes there isn't a photograph as well. It's just a very freeing exercise to help loosen you up. All right, so that's that. And I have three more pieces left and I might incorporate another one from the pile. Kind of looks like a fence a little bit. Cover up that border. Cool, let's see what's on the other side of the apple. Oh, I don't like that. But yeah, we always have to remember to look on the other side. You never know what could be hiding. All right, then done, like no big deal. <clears throat> All right, how did that feel for everybody? I'd like to hear how you, if you liked that exercise, if you felt awkward, because the next one we're going to be reaching back to childhood. It's going to be fun. I'm trying to keep my studio bits separate so I don't wonder what happened to them later. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so if nobody has any input or questions, we can move right along. Um, I hope that you feel like all the uh, creative juices are flowing through you a little bit more now. I'm going to pause to drink some water. Also, if people want to, um, if anyone wants to share their, those, those ones are hard to share, I think, because they're not glued down. But when we get into the other exercises, if anyone wants to share your artwork on camera, you're welcome to do that. Yes, thank you, Anna. That's perfect. Uh, okay, so the next exercise we're doing, um, if you can share the screen with those samples. And the funniest thing ever, <laughs> I forgot to get substrates to glue down on, but thank goodness I have an office right next door with paper. Um, but I'll get you all started and then I'm gonna run and get something to glue on. So the next one, you just needed three random pieces of paper. I grabbed a whole bunch from the studio this morning just to show you. So I'm constantly making painted papers, whether using my gel uh, plate, which is a gelatin um, printing plate that makes printing at home like super easy without a press. Um, and I make lots of random papers. Sometimes my papers just come from me rolling off my brayer. Um, or sometimes when I paint, I use paper to rub paint off of my surface. So I end up with lots and lots of stuff. So many different cool things. And I try to always do it on thinner copy paper. You can see that this is not very thick um, because this project works better with thinner paper. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to fold up paper and then cut through it. The more you fold it, the harder it is to cut. Hey, you, um, do you want, I put the description of the, um, the exercise in the chat for everyone. Oh, perfect. And That's do you want perfect. me to stop sharing my screen and spotlight your work oh, surface again? Yes, I guess so. But everyone pay attention to those and we'll have her bring those back in it when I'm at that spot. Thank you. That's perfect. <clears throat> All right. So here are the papers I was sharing. So now you can see them bigger. So these are just random painted papers using my gel plate or just whatever. Um, sometimes I like to make a sheet on nicer drawing paper. And then look what you can do on a copier. It helps that I run a, I'm a, do graphic design and printing. Um, so I have access to copiers, um, but yeah, it's the same pattern. That's just straight copy. And then that's a reverse copy and it's on the thinner paper, uh, more gel plate stuff. This is a brayer roll off. Some of you might just have plain paper or some sort of patterned um, paper. So this is just yellow paper with white dots. Copier paper works well. Like here's a piece of blue copier paper. I happen to have something interesting. I copied out of a book, enlarged on it. Um, another just white piece of copy paper, but I copied some random marks I made. Uh, origami paper, perfect for this. 
Um, and then more just, that's another printed or painted paper I made. And then this is just like a scrapbook piece of paper. So pick three, I'm just gonna pick three random ones here. Um, what color would go with that? Maybe that. Okay, so I picked three pieces of paper. So on this exercise, oh, can we go back to the, the slide for this exercise, please? Yes. All right, so up there are three kirigami uh, snowflakes. It's something we've all done as a kid. Uh, we folded up a piece of paper and then we cut shapes out of it and open it up and it makes a cool pattern and we decorate our kitchen windows or wherever in the school, put them up and that's our winter decorations. So I decided, uh, I helped my neighbors decorate for Christmas last year and that inspired my 100 day project which was to cut 100 snowflakes, one a day uh, and that's, it's very interesting how while you're doing this project, you feel like you're cutting the same thing over and over because it just feels like how many shapes can you really cut from this little tiny folded piece of paper? It's amazing how many, like these are three different examples and they're very different from each other. So just like a real snowflake in the world, I do not think you could purposely cut the same exact snowflake um, unless maybe you came up with this design and you drew it on it every time and cut that but just from your head um, which is how we're going to do it just easy and no thinking again you're going to be surprised so okay now we can go back to my surface what we're going to do i hope you all have three pieces of paper it could be from your junk mail could be torn out page from a magazine i think it's easier when the paper is at least uh, you could get at least an eight inch square, but you don't even need to make it into a square. Um, I'll probably cut, I'll cut this blue one as the rectangle, but I'm gonna make the other one square, especially like since this one doesn't have stuff all the way over it. Um, and an easy way to do that without having any measuring device or a paper cutter is you just fold a corner down so you get a perfect triangle. So you see how easy that was? And if you don't even want to use scissors, you can do these all these exercises without scissors. The last one might be a little more challenging, but it can be done. I have done it. I've even cut a snowflake with no scissors. Um, so then I just fold that little part back and I, I break that away. So I'll just break it away. Yes, because you can break paper. But anyway, I fold it back and forth and tear it off or use scissors, whatever, whatever makes you happy. And if you tear like straight away like this and not this direction, you'll get a better rip on your fold line. So once again, you just pull it apart this way, not pull it up towards you. All right, so now I have a square. And I'm just gonna clean this one up. This one looks almost pretty square already and I'm just gonna use scissors. I don't care if it's perfect because that is not what this is about. All right, so kirigami is a Japanese word. It means cut paper designs. Um, which is from folded cut paper. So origami is just folded paper. Kirigami is folding and cutting. Um, and that is where our snowflake stuff comes from, is from that art form. So I'm gonna start with the one that I've already folded. There are several ways you can fold your piece of paper. Um, I'm gonna start with the square and then I'll fold the rectangle for those who maybe are choosing to do a rectangle. Um, but you can fold in half to a rectangle, then in half again to a square, and you can cut that. Or you can fold rectangle square, and then I think this one's called like the spider fold, and then you fold your square to a triangle, and then you can go triangle. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go two triangles for sure. If I can fold it a third time, I'll kind of try to show you how thick it gets. But this is just like three, uh, ruled like college paper from a notepad that's got the perf at the top. All right, so I'm gonna go triangle. And you can see, it's, I did not get a perfect square. Do I care? I do not. All right, and then I'm gonna go another triangle and just try to get that lined up as best as possible. All right, and it's still pretty thin. So I'm happy about that because the more you can fold it, the more intricate of a design and smaller pieces you can get for your collage work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these and you're gonna make 
three piles. So from each piece of paper, you're gonna get cut shapes and then you're gonna get a bigger shape. And then you'll make one pile for each of your pieces of paper. All right, so that one's folded and I'll start cutting in a minute. This one I'm just gonna leave as a rectangle and you can really just fold it any way you want. You get different designs. So I went rectangle to rectangle. And you know what's gonna happen sometimes? You're gonna cut your whole design apart into separate pieces. It happens, it's okay. Um, okay, so I really wanna make it smaller yet. Yeah, it's a little thick, but it's not too bad. This one is probably a little heavier weight than standard copy paper. So standard copy paper in the industry is a 20 pound bond. Laser paper, which most people should be using in their home laser printers, uh, is 24 pounds, so it's a little heavier. This is probably about that weight. I know it's very confusing to think that something only four pounds heavier in the paper world is that much thicker, but it does make a difference. Although I guess four pounds in like, you know, on your, your sweet little puppy is probably not healthy. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so that one I folded that way. And then I think I'll do square to triangle on this one. And I don't usually fold them all in advance. I'm just doing that for you guys. Although this is, might be a little too thick. So maybe I'll just do two folds on this one. Because this is like an art paper, so it's very fancy. And as you see, all of my pieces of paper have different patterns on each side. So that's gonna be fun to deal with, or not deal with, but to play with, I should say. I'm not, that's gonna be exciting. All right, go. So I'm gonna cut one and I'm gonna run away while you guys cut so I can grab some paper. Um, oh, so little lesson on cutting. So these are good if you have hand issues, uh, carpal tunnel, uh, grip strength, uh, whatever, arthritis. Um, these have a little spring and they're, they're so nice to cut with. Um, and I also like these. Um, they're just standard scissors. I got these at Costco forever ago and they're just, they don't give up. Um, so I think I'm gonna use these because I do have carpal tunnel and they're nicer to use. But when you cut paper, I'm gonna cut this, you don't cut with the, the tip. You don't cut here. You'll be here all day with your little tips cutting like little things out. The best way to cut is with the fulcrum, which is this point in your scissors where your scissors naturally just come together. That's the fulcrum. And if you always cut from that, you're gonna just get a way better cut. And another thing, I'll tear that off, is to guide the paper, not the scissors. Like, don't be moving your hand to get this, the thing, move the paper. So you'll see, like I try to keep the scissors in the same spot. And then I can just turn the paper and get a shape. All right, so that's quick scissor, scissor lesson. All right, so the secret to not getting your design to fall apart is to always leave some of your folded edges. So this edge here where there's no fold, you can cut all that away, it does not matter. But if you cut all of this away, then you're gonna end up with several pieces of paper. It's not the end of the world if that happens, um, unless your intention was to just have a snowflake when you're done. But we're gonna use the pieces in a collage, so you'll just end up with more pieces. All right, so I just go for it. I kind of hold the piece, kind of let it tell me what it wants, and then I just cut. I don't think, I don't know what's gonna look like. There's no preconceived notions. Um, Can you show yeah, me the like, side that you're not cutting, that you're not cutting, or are you cutting all the sides? Oh, I'm cutting through the entire thing, and I am cutting all the sides. You're, the more you cut away, the more intricate your final piece would be, and the more of these you'll get. So okay. when we're done, we get cool shapes that are cut away. Sometimes, well, because I cut from the top where there were no folds, I get smaller pieces. But see where the fold was? I got a like a weird fat heart. That's kind of cool. Um, maybe easier to see there. Um, so yeah, you just leave. So here I have some of the fold left. I'll start unfolding it so you can see. Here is a fold, here is a fold. I can still cut some of this fold away. I've got this entire edge I can cut into. But you don't have to cut a lot either. You can make a, a beautiful design only cutting away three sections. Um, I have done that. It's pretty amazing. And it blows my mind every time that I can create something by doing very little. It's like so nice. It takes away the pressure. And like, I'm gonna cut a really crazy shape here. And yeah, I'm dangerously cutting away a lot of the fold, but I still have fold here. And I can just go, I'm gonna cut into it, why not? 
All right. Okay. So I'm going to count that one as done. And to help you guys see that it's easy and it doesn't matter what it looks like, I'll open mine up. I usually wait till the end because it's more fun that way. Anyway, making a pile of all the bits. And here's what my snowflake looked like. And it's kind of fun to unfold it and watch because like, what is that? That looks like a face. Oh, I guess it's upside down. So kind of looks like maybe a Dr. Seuss character. And then, oh, that looks like a pelvic bone, right? It's kind of cool. And then I open it again and it's, I don't know, that could be like a floral design from the Pennsylvania Dutch. I love it because it really gets your imagination going. And then this is what the design looked like at the end. And the cool thing with this is if I wanted to keep this because I loved it and I did not want to mess it up, I could put it aside and only use the cut pieces. If I don't care about what happens to this, I can then cut this up and use it in smaller pieces in my final collage I'll make with them. So that I'll decide later. All right, I'm gonna go run and get some paper to glue down on. Um, I'm just gonna use eight and a half by 11 laser paper. So I encourage you just to use whatever you have. You can even glue on a grocery bag. You, that's the beautiful thing about this. You can find all your supplies probably in your recycling bin. And I'll take a little water break uh, and then I'm gonna cut my other two pieces. Did anybody have any questions? Are we having fun? Does this bring yes. you back to your childhood? <laughs> having maybe so much fun. Oh, yay. Um, and maybe you do this on the regular. I have cut uh, 200 snowflakes since, uh, I don't even know when the 100 day project started, but it was sometime in January, I think. And then right after that, I did a fundraiser for the Equitable Giving Circle by selling cut paper snowflakes on hand-painted papers. So that was fun. All right, water break, and then I'm gonna cut some more. I hope you're not thinking. If you're thinking, tell your brain to be quiet. This is your brain's chance to take a vacation and you to let out your little inner child, yeah. make your heart <laughs> happy with just creating. I love hanging out with my neighbor kids because when they create, there's no questions. It's just pure joy. Who cares if orange and blue make mud? I don't care. Um, my favorite kid I hang out with, his name is, well, he's not my favorite. He's one of my favorites, I should say. There's four of them, but he's five and I give him a palette of paint. And I just love what he does with it. He just takes his brush and swirls them all together. I'm like, all right, I like the way you just tackle that. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna cut now. Um, yeah, I'll use these scissors so you can see the difference between two different types of scissors. All right, I am terrible at always cutting away all the folds on the, the rectangle ones. So let's see if I can pay attention to what I'm doing. But I have to say, I'm never upset with the end product, that's for sure. And think outside the box, like look at this crazy. It's hard because it's such a thick piece of paper. I probably shouldn't have gone as many folds. Ooh, that's I gotta be careful there. All right. <laughs> or I don't have to be careful. That's I'm like going against my own guidance. See, and sometimes you end up with like a section because the paper didn't line up properly. You just go back in with your scissors. And if it doesn't quite work for you, just rip it off. Um, yeah, okay. So I have a daily practice and I change it up by doing interesting and fun things like snowflakes or I'm on, whoops, <laughs> piece flew off the table. Uh, I'm currently working on um, circle doodles. And I have to say, I got sick with a cold and I forgot how much they suck. I haven't been sick in three years and usually I don't get a cold very bad. Um, but this one I didn't like, it was not so good. And uh, I think my body didn't know what was going on. It's like, what? You haven't even been around people? How are you getting sick? Those cute little children I hang out with. <laughs> um, I, and my brain is, see, and this is perfect to actually work on something like this when your brain isn't with you because there is no way I'm thinking to that. Oh, so my daily practice, I do circle moves, but I will admit I skipped two days because I needed rest. All right, so there's that one. That's interesting. Um, I can't wait to see what my shapes look like. 
list. I'll do that later. But I'll open this one up for you so you guys can see maybe a little inspiration as you go. And see, they don't look like snowflakes at all. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they do. I haven't seen every snowflake. So, but look, that's kind of cool with that, the way that pattern is on it. I think that's kind of groovy. I like it. All right. Yeah, and I'm doing Inktober as well. I love Inktober. It's a great way for me to break out my alcohol inks. And I think I'm going to start playing with just plain old India ink and a paintbrush in a tiny sketchbook. Um, I think her name was Connie Solera. I just discovered her yesterday. I like her style. Okay, so this one's a square. What am I going to do? Let's try to make something interesting, different. Peggy, have you heard the story about the guy who um, claimed uh, trademark on Inktober? No, I didn't know there was a guy, Jake, Jake Parker or something, right? I, I, can't, I think that's his name, but a lot of my friends in the comic book industry are doing Drawtober or some other thing instead of Inktober mm -hmm. now because of him. Oh, okay, well maybe I'll change my name to Drawtober. Although I'm not drawing. Maybe I'll just make up my own Tober. <laughs> we'll call go. it Photober. Because I like to incorporate the PF as much as I can. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. Photober. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, it's just a good it. way to break out. You're going to eat a lot of soup during Photober? Oh, yeah, there you go. Let's, that sounds like a great idea. That was JH, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love pho. Well, I guess it's pho, right? But pho, pho works ramen, whatever. Um, okay, I'm stuck. I was talking and then I started thinking about what I was cutting. So no more thinking, just gonna cut. I always like to see how many like little in and out turns I can make with my scissors. And as you see, I am I'm probably getting away from the camera a little bit, turning the paper. I'm trying to keep the scissors. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's kind of groovy. All right, I want to cut a shape here though. Give it a little more visual interest. Plus I need stuff to collage with at the end. All right. And then this is the last one. And this one's kind of cool because I cut like the whole edge. I got this crazy, reminds me of like uh, <laughs> the paper borders you buy for your like classroom um, bulletin board. But this is like a little maybe looks like a health class, right? It looks like tonsils or something, esoph esophagus stuff. <laughs> I don't know, or organic plant life. That's so cool. Anyway, see, you can easily just get sucked into this world. I really do think it helps your brain create uh, associations. It's very much like the Rorschach ink blots. And there's that one, that one's kind of groovy. So I've got, I kind of cut some interesting things, huh? I got very curvy, something with a combination. And that's interesting because there's a lot of lines in this pattern. And then I guess I kind of cut a combo in both, in all three, I mean. All right, are you guys excited to know what we're gonna do with this giant mess of cut up paper? What you're gonna do is you're gonna pick your favorite pile. You can keep the snowflake and the cut up bits or just the cut up bits, but you get to keep one whole pile. Decide which pile is your main pile. Oh, that's hard. All right, I think I'm gonna go with yellow. Yellow is my main pile. Okay, and so what I'm kind of tricking you all into doing is making something that might have like a good composition and balance and value because I'm making you choose now how much of one of each pile you're gonna use in your final piece. And I lost a piece, I'm gonna pick it up. All right, so yellow is my number one pile. I'm keeping all of the pieces. My number two pile, which I'm going to keep half of the pile. I won't keep the uh, this part, although I reserve the right. You also can reserve the right to change your mind and edit your pile as you're working, but without thinking too much. So I'm gonna keep half of this pile. All right, put these aside, not even looking at them, don't care what they are. All right, and then the last pile, I'm gonna keep just a few pieces. Um, I put them all together. The, pot, the piles? Um, you can put them all together, but uh, it's better if you keep them a little separate, If you're, especially if the papers might look similar when they're all next to each other. 
Mine are very obviously different. So, I mean, you can see, I can tell them apart, but I'm only gonna keep a few pieces and I don't even know what all my shapes look like yet. But I'm just gonna keep like that. Oh, maybe a couple of those little ones. All right. All right, and that is my other pile. So I've got big, bigger, biggest pile. And that is kind of how we're gonna make our collage. So this exercise has transformed from its original rendition. This is what I call paper doodling. And paper doodling is just like how you doodle when you're in one of these meetings with your work and you don't really wanna be there and you got your notebook and it looks like you're taking work notes, but really you're drawing something. Uh, maybe it's just lines and like how the ocean makes you feel. You're just like drawing wavy lines back and forth. We all know how to doodle and we doodle without thinking a lot of the times. So that is what we're gonna do. So with your blank piece of paper, I want you to start with your biggest pile. I want you to glue down a few pieces and I don't want you to think about it. You're not like, planning anything out. You're just going to pick it up and pretty much the first place your little heart desires to put it is where you should put it. Um, so now we're getting into glue, right? So I have this old catalog. Well, it's not that old. It just came in the mail, but I don't care about this catalog. So I use it as my glue book. And so what I'll do is I'll put this off to the side. I will, um, I think you can see all that. I'll use a page over here. I'll put my piece of paper here and I'll use my glue stick to put glue on the back side whichever side you decide is your backside, because don't forget every piece of paper, when, well, every object actually has multiple sides, right? Objects do 3D things and 2D things have two sides. So that's the piece I picked up. I'm just gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna glue from my big pile, a few pieces, because this is the big pile. And that's exactly where my brain said to put it. So I'm gonna do it, I'm not thinking. I don't know if I wanna use the big snowflake yet, but, all right, another piece. Maybe I'll use the plain yellow side. I'm putting the glue on the dots this time, mixing it up, and I'm not thinking. All right. So uh, this is what we're going to do. You're going to glue down not every piece from your big pile. You're just going to start there. Then you're going to start incorporating from your other piles. And so what the point of the whole bigger or big, bigger, biggest is that every good painting, like if you're using color as your main uh, composition and you're using say blue, orange and purple, you're not gonna use all three of those colors in the same amount in your painting because that wouldn't make a very exciting painting. And so here we're forcing you forcing you to do it. Uh, anyway, it's like an encouragement to not overuse one of your colors or pieces of paper that you've cut up because you have less of two of them. So you can start by gluing, like I'd start with three of your main color and then start adding your other pieces and very move very quickly and organically, no thinking. Um, the way I used to do this was I had you cut a shape and immediately glue it down and then cut another shape but I love the snowflakes so much. I had to incorporate this with this exercise. So this is gonna be my third piece because I'm already holding it and I'm just gonna glue it somewhere. And you'll notice the first two pieces I put together but I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm just randomly put it. Okay, if you have any questions, please speak up. I'm just gonna keep working um, and make a collage and Anina, how are we doing on time? Does anybody know the time? <laughs> oh, I can do it. Look at that. I know how to use it. 45 oh, minutes in, into it. Okay, sounds good. And we do go to 2.30, right? So, perfect. I'm when the glue page gets filled up, you you turn the page and start. Yes, with you do. One. Good job. Yeah, totally. You just because that way you always have a clean surface. And sometimes I'll use the other side too, but because I don't want to be like all over the place, I'm just going to close it. Plus, at my work, we get a ton of catalogs. It's not like I'm ever going to run out. All right, so I'm just going to start gluing, and I'm not thinking. And the point of this isn't that we're making a. Uh, finished piece of art that you're going to sell or it's going to be hanging in the the met or something this is 
a creative exercise in loosening up. Um, and a lot of times I'll throw these in a drawer and then I'll cut them up again later and use them in a collage. And nothing. <laughs> you switched <laughs> colors. What was that? You switched to the next color pile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I want you to do. After you've got at least three of your main color, then you can just start mixing it up. Um, and so your big pile will be your one that you have the most of. So that's going to be your main color in your composition or your pattern or whatever it is. The one that you have the, the so biggest pile will be the dominant. The bigger pile will be the complementary to it. Not necessarily a complementary color, but it will help it balance itself. And then the last pile, your big pile, which is your smallest pile, uh, that will be your focal color. So when you start putting that in, um, you might not want to scatter it all over your page. You might want it to be more in a one spot on your thing. Um, but I like to work in threes. Like if I use a color somewhere in my painting or my collage composition, um, I would put it in a few places. Um, eventually, sometimes maybe it's that color becomes more like this yellow color will probably be way more than three places. Um, but that is kind of like my grounding color. That's what's gonna hold all the other pieces together. And by doing it this way, we end up with unique shapes that you might not have thought to cut yourself without making a snowflake. Um, and, uh, and you saw, I just like kind of, I was like, oh yeah, that's where I'm gonna put it. Uh, you can do that, but don't overthink it. Don't, as soon as you start going like this, hmm. You're thinking, stop thinking. Oh, I kind of like it there though. I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna put it there. <laughs> but there's no cheating, right? It's just whatever. Um, and I have to say, this is exactly, actually I'm gonna stick to the original. Just let's do it. Cause that's what I said. We're just going for the first spot. All right, I need some more yellow. And something I learned recently is that the Yoohoo brand is one of the ones that's permanent. I guess Elmer's isn't as permanent as we all once thought. Um, although I do like the Elmer's glue sticks. And of course I'm using an Elmer's glue stick. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, there. I like the smooth creaminess. Uh, it's kind of scary when you know what your favorite glue sticks are, right? But I mean, as a collage artist, I guess I should. And see, I don't like that little piece. I'm just gonna tear that off. And that's totally fine. I started using Yes Paste, uh, but I do not like it for this kind of collage work. Um, I'm a messy girl. And with Yes Paste, you cannot really be super messy because it's water soluble. So if you get it on the top part of your collage and then you say brush on a varnish, you're going to reactivate that yes paste and it turns into this weird goopy mess um, but it is good for gluing um, paper to a board like if you're that's how you want to present your artwork is glued to a panel that is it's perfect for that once it's dry it is good it is and it your paper stays so flat i'm still experimenting with exactly how to uh get it on everything without making a big mess that's that's the hard part. Peggy, which glue stick did you say is more permanent than the others? The Yoohoo. Oh. Hey, look at that. I'm learning how to do things upside down a little bit. Um, and I'm going to figure this out. So the next time I do this, it's not upside down. But I figured for collage, like we're not doing any, the next exercise is more of a, is what I call linear collage. I'm not the only one, but, uh, a linear collage is something that's planned out. Um, so it's a little more thought goes into it. And I know we were talking about not thinking today, but there are easy ways to make a cool linear collage still without overthinking it. Um, so it is all possible. And I have to say, I, I take a class every Tuesday night and I learn something new in the art world and about myself every Tuesday. Um, 
and I can't think. That's what I've learned. Every time I think, I I get stuck. I get a little, you know, like, why bother? Nobody's gonna like it. That ugly critic in my head comes out. Um, oh, I don't like it. Uh, so these exercises are great for quieting that inner critic who thinks I'm not very good at this. And I say, F you, critic, because I'm actually not too bad at this. Um, I don't know how I want this. I want it there, but it's not really the right angle, but I'm just going with the flow. And sometimes you can slush it when your glue is still wet, which is nice. The yes paste is good for that as well because it takes longer to dry. That's another reason why I'm not in love with it yet, but I'll get there, I'm sure. All right, okay, so while you're all working, let me talk a little bit about negative space. So there, you can cover an entire surface with paper so that the white is completely gone, or you can leave your background color showing. That is up to you. There is no right or wrong in any style of collage, even if you're trying to make a piece to sell. It is your uh, call. If you wanna cover the whole sheet, do it. If you don't, don't. Um, other things you can do, we're not going to be doing that today, but I uh, should let y'all know that collage doesn't have to end with gluing paper down. You can come back on it once it's dry and draw and doodle with actual pen. Um, sometimes it's nice to have a pile of these random collages sitting maybe next to where you hold your Zoom meetings for work. And then you can just pull them out and doodle on these and see what you can do to push them further. And like, what does the negative space on your collage inspire you to do? Does it do you want to fill these in with patterns? Do you want to make those into leaves? You know, that kind of looks like an acorn. Um, maybe these are hands, you know, so you can start playing around with that and turning it into something more. All right, I'm going to break into my snowflake and look how much it's not precious. Totally not precious. Tearing paper is also a great way to get shapes to use. You don't always have to use a scissors. All right, putting that there. And sometimes I find it funny, like I remind myself all the time, paper has two sides, paper has two sides, but sometimes I don't even remember to look until I go to put the glue down. And then I, sometimes that's when I have a little conundrum because I'm like, oh, but I like both sides, what do I do? Um, and I'm gonna tell you what I do sometimes. I will put a collage on hold if the image is worthy enough. And if I need to scan it, I will wait and I will bring that thing to work, scan it in so I have a digital copy of it to use in the future. Yes, I'm a collage dork. <laughs> but I love collage and sometimes like a cool texture or a cool image, you don't wanna lose it. I don't know if I want that there. Let's see, what else, what else? I need another one of these guys. So now look at your piles as you're going through them. As you can see on mine, I've got a lot of yellow. I have only used one piece of my bright blue. Probably should get adding some more of those. Um, and you can feel free to stop anytime. If you like your collage, grab a new piece of paper and start a new one. You probably have lots of bits left over. You could go backwards, right, and use the one that you kept the little of could be your bigger pile. <clears throat> um, and sometimes it's fun just to see what kind of patterns you can make with the leftover shapes. Um, I think I need just a tiny minute. I'm almost feeling like I might be done. Um, I, think I feel like I need something else down here to balance it out. Oh, it's blank. All right, all right, I want this piece. See, and as you get closer to like having put down a bunch of pieces, that's when you can kind of see like, what does it need and what is it missing? Um, what can I do to move it along uh, into something that maybe has a better composition or just feels better to you? Yeah, I like that there. And this is when you can use your brain a little bit. 
I know I'm telling you to put it on vacation, but use it like your five-year-old self used to use your blade. Oh, I know I had it the other way, but let's see. All right, let's do it. All right. I don't want those touching. There we go. And wrinkles in your paper are fine. Okay, and one more little piece of blue. Oh, I got. Ooh, that's cool, but that might be too big. Ah, I know what I'm going to do. Let's do a little bit of this. These little pieces can be challenging. So my trick is um, I hold it in my hand and I want to put this, the plain blue side up. I just hold it in my hand and then stick it on the top of my glue stick and roll it around. Yes, you do get stuff on your hands, but you gotta get messy when you're making art. All right, one more of those. And then I'm gonna show you another thing I do with my cut pieces from. Yes, it'll also stick to you. All right. I feel like that is done enough for me. As you see, the yellow is my dominant color. And I threw in the extra bit and it kind of flows you around. And then the blue is like the little highlights, like a chalice or I don't know, some sort of crystal floating through some crazy planetary aquatic scape because these kind of remind me of kelp or something. Um, okay, so that's that. And other things you can do while you're still working and then we'll move on to the next style of collage, which will take a little longer. Um, and this is the part I think that scares most people um, because we're gonna try to make something that looks like something, but I'm gonna show you some tricks and different techniques that you can use that makes it so simple. All right, so something fun to do because you do get a lot of uh, right mirrored images. You can just make some cool um, motifs. Motifs are used in pattern design and like all sorts of things, right? Like you have dinnerware that might have like some sort of cool design just in the middle, that is the motif. And then maybe the design around the edge has like a supporting design that goes with the motif, but uses maybe a little bit of the motif. So this is just a very fun way to make, I don't know why, but it looks like these are like panthers jumping away from each other. In that direction a little more. Um, and then look, that piece looks cool. I can put that on there somewhere. Sometimes with these, I don't just start gluing. I will think it through a little bit, but it's also fun just to, just to play. What can I create with all the pieces I've done? And then let's see, let's add something from one of the others. Yeah. There are a lot of surface pattern designers who actually make their patterns by making cut paper collages. Um, and one of my favorite kids book illustrators, Eric Carl, who passed away. I think that's how you say his last name. Um, but you know, he does all those fabulous cut paper collage kid books and they're gorgeous. The artwork is so amazing. I have a few of his books in my collection and I am a childless person. Yep, I think that looks good. And then look, I made a little motif. I can scan this in and use the shapes and I actually do surface pattern design too. So um, all of these things I do, I use to create ideas for all of the art I like to create. It doesn't just pop out of my head all by itself. I wish it did, but it didn't. So that's kind of cool. I like that little design, like maybe if I was to draw this in the computer, I would, you know, close that gap up. I would probably not use these colors, but um, I think the shape is fun. So that's another way you can play with your um, shapes. And I don't even use this one, but look how cool this shape came out. Like that is totally fun. Maybe I just glue it right there. That sounds good. <clears throat> uh, and then you sometimes grab your glue stick by the sticky end. And when I get that, I just wiped it off. But sometimes you get like a little extra ring of glue stick around the outside. 
I just smear it onto one of the pages and make a pile and then kind of pick it up with the top. Because, you know, don't want to waste it. I have been looking for alternatives to glue stick. That's why I started using the S paste. It's not going to be the answer because it kills me to throw away one of these when I go through them, which is quite often. I have been reducing my plastic waste in all aspects of my life. And that's the hardest one. They do make a refillable glue stick, but it's only for fabric glue and I don't understand why. So maybe that's something I'll, I'll make one. It'll be fun house art, reusable, recyclable glue sticks or something, I don't know. Um, okay, how's everybody doing? I think that looks actually kind of cool. I made two. You just don't sneeze on your project. No, the well, these ones glue are gluing down, but the ones you don't <laughs> glue down, yeah. <laughs> but you don't it's actually have to glue down. these down either. If you never want to glue down a collage again in your life, you don't have to. I think ephemeral collages are so fun. I have a friend who actually makes artwork. Sometimes he draws on like a notebook piece of paper. He tears it out. He does like a street collage. So he'll put his drawing down and maybe a puddle and then throw some rocks and debris maybe found a cigarette but he'll photograph it and then he throws the art away <laughs> he like just picks it up throws it into the garbage um i freaking love that i think that's pretty awesome um because you know as an artist of course you know we want to sell our art and um i i too wish to sell art one day but like that's not why i create um i create because i kind of have to to stay alive and keep myself sane um and I think a lot of artists are the same way. Selling their art is bonus because it helps them be able to buy more supplies to uh, create more beautiful things to share with the world. Okay, I'm gonna take a drink break. Anina, if you wanna share the next slide. All right, we're doing good. We have half an hour for this last one, which will be perfect. Okay. One I second. hope everybody's having fun. This is great. I've been looking, uh, you know, at people who have their, not spying, but, you know, people, everyone who has their cameras on seems to be uh, really engaged and really enjoying. Oh, good. Stuff. All right. So a lot of people don't even really know most of my real collage work because I haven't really shared it recently on social media. So I had to go through my Facebook and find some linear collages I've made. So I'll just go through them all really quickly to just tell you a little bit about each one. Uh, I have a lot of magazines in my life and I love vintage like life magazines. And sometimes you can't scan it and use it again because it's just the, the beauty of that piece of paper the image was printed on and it's like, you know, harder to find. I don't want to take away from that history by scanning it and reusing it. So that Darth Vader one, I forget the title, but my uh, nephew owns it. He saw it and he's like, must have. Um, is Dr. Doolittle <laughs> riding a giraffe from the front of Life magazine from a long, long time ago. And uh, when I saw that cover, I tore it off and put it in the special drawer for special collages that have yet to be born in my head. But I know one day I'll be like, yes. Um, and this was the case. So it was a Star Wars themed um, art show. And well, hello, I had to. <laughs> uh, and I like to incorporate paintings with my collagerie. So um, the top half where the blue sky and the green planet, that's all paint. And I used glow in the dark paint. So that part glows. Um, and then to get Darth Vader's head right, um, uh, I did have to find a Darth Vader head at the right angle printed them out at different sizes to see which one would exactly be perfect. Um, and those X-wing fighters were tough to cut out. I did use an X-Acto knife. <clears throat> and sometimes you will need an X-Acto knife for some of these linear collages, depending on how much effort you really wanna put into it. I have tricks around that as well. Um, <laughs> you don't have to be as crazy. When I first started collagery, and that's what I like to call collage work, uh, I was in a group and they had this thing they called fussy cutting. And I never want to do that ever. That sounds not like fun to me. Um, some people enjoy that little teeny like snip, 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 snip. And that is when you will use the tips of your fine uh, um, scissors. Although my I have a Kirigami book and in it they swear you should never use the tip. And they say for tiny cuts, 
that little pair of scissors on a Swiss Army knife are the perfect pair of scissors and they're the best ones. You can't buy a generic brand, it has to be Swiss Army. Um, anyway, so that I knew what I was going to do. I just had to find the elements to make it work. And so on the Darth Vader one, you'll notice there are weird rocks, which is supposed to mimic some sort of planet surface. Um, that is because the address label was right across that part of the image. Can't have that in my collage. Um, and I printed out and then here again, I needed specific imagery. So I cut out different desert landscapes and stuff to overlap each other to uh, make the planet surface. The next one over, uh, actually the next two, I like to call them my Franken collages. Um, and the first one is a complete assemblage from random things <laughs> found in a magazine to make some sort of creature. So tomato for the under the coat part. I don't know what that part would be. Um, octopus legs. It's got like one person's hand. It's got a Spider-Man hand, a dog head. The eyeballs are from a human. The mouth is from a human. It's a cookie for the hat. You know, so you really get to think outside the box and really just play around and have some fun. Um, the second one is a very similar idea, but much simpler, right? I uh, found a body and put a skull on it. That's a simple uh, surrealist type collage where it's called just uh, subtract and replace. So on this one, I probably didn't even have to subtract the head because the skull covered his head perfectly. The last collage with the lady with the flower plays around with a few different um, ideas. So on that collage, what I like to do is I'll make a background of just random collage pieces. I just glue them down, kind of like we did the, the snowflake pieces, right? We just randomly did it, but I'll cover the entire surface. And then I mute it back. And I love doing this because I just realized recently that I do this in my graphic design work. When I have an image that's too powerful for say the background of my label I'm working on for a client, I make a layer in Illustrator and I fill it with a color and make it transparent so it you can still see what's behind it, but it's muted it, right? So I do that with, uh, uh, what are they called? I lost my train of thought, patterns, you know, people who sew clothing, they get patterns printed on beautiful uh, ecru colored tissue paper. When you glue that down, not only do you get the lines left from the pattern on your artwork, but it sort of makes everything um, go together better. Uh, it's equivalent to in painting when you put a glaze over a painting to kind of bring it all together and help it look more cohesive. And because I did that, the figure in the foreground stands out more. And Without doing that, she would have been competing with the background and it would not have been a successful collage. So with that one, it was a found, all of the background stuff is from my random bits. And then the rose was found, you know, all the pieces, I just cut them out from a magazine and assembled it at just kind of free and easy going. Nothing like, yes, I knew I was going to take this face and alter it, but that's about as far as my thinking went. So that is what we're gonna do. You can, um, make any kind of collage that you would like. We're going to, if you don't have magazines, you could probably use junk mail, dig through your recycling bin. You're gonna need um, a few different images so you can um, play and see what you wanna do. So what I recommend is going through a magazine. I'm gonna pick three, I'm gonna show you. Okay, Anina, we could do back to my surface. We had one person who wanted to see the snowflake collages again. So I'm just gonna go back oh. one slide real quick and then, okay. and, then yeah, uh, totally. and let that show for a minute and then stop. Uh... And these oh. snowflake ones aren't collages. They're just the cut snowflakes. I didn't have any finished collages to show you, but I thought I would show you just some finished snowflake designs. So these are just a few examples of the many different ways that you can cut up one piece of paper into these cool patterns, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. And I do have like a tissue box, not tissue box, what is it called? Shoe box full of all the detritus from this project uh, where I cut a total of 200 snowflakes in like six months. Uh, and those will be used in random collages. So I'm looking forward to playing with those this winter when it's all gross outside. So collage gives you a reason to never throw anything away. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was meeting some new coworkers the other day and I was standing by the recycling bin and right when they were like introducing me, I just reached in and pulled a piece of paper out of the recycling bin, pulled it in half and kept it in my hand and they all looked at me and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to put paint on that. <laughs> yeah, I keep the tape when you rip tape off of boxes, you know, like to either recycle them properly or to use them as your mulch cover thing. Um, sometimes you get the coolest 
the way the paper stuck to the tape, it's like, oh, so beautiful. Um, yeah, so I have a house full of garbage. <laughs> um, I'm saving the planet one one little craft and art project at a time. All right, so magazines. These are the ones I pulled from my pile. I have so many magazines. I'm not supposed to allow any more in my house, but I have a problem. I keep saying, yes, I'll take those. So I'm just gonna pick three of these. So I got Vanity Fair, Fine Gardening, Time. Looks like it's already been used. Oh, that was probably somebody took their name off. That's smart. Yeah, if you donate your magazines to like scrap, you should probably cut your address off. Um, if you just give them to me, <laughs> I won't sell your information, I promise. Um, anyway, GQ, I think I'm gonna use that one. Kind of flip through it really quick just to make sure like what you're seeing in the magazine is something that you'll be happy with. I'm happy with that. Um, and then I don't even know. I got food and wine, fine gardening, Wired. I'm not even gonna look in it because Wired usually has some cool things. So pick some magazines. As you see, I just had a variety of different ones. Um, and I've discovered I don't like Sports Illustrated. I was collecting those for a while, but I'm gonna be getting rid of my Sports Illustrated. They're really good for words when I do art journaling. Uh, Sports Illustrated and People Magazine, best sources for cool phrases, if you're into that. All right, so what you're gonna do, you're not gonna think too much. And this is where it's hard to be a collage artist when you're just wanting to tear pages out of a magazine to like reduce the stack. Because one, you get confused as to what freaking year it is because I have a lot of old magazines. I'm like, when did that happen? Oh, this is from 84. Okay, yeah, that's old, all right. Um, and then you get sucked into reading an article or just whatever. So that is not what you're doing. You're going to go through quickly and you're gonna see like I, and try not to tear out more than say, five pages per magazine. Um, and if you've torn out a page and then you see one you like better, uh, you can replace it. So but you're going to think about something that you can make a story with. That's, that's a good way to describe it. So ways you can do that. Sometimes it's nice if you have a picture of a person. Here, let's see, GQ probably has that. Um, not exactly, but ooh, there's a person for sure. Um, you want somebody in clothing. So you can remove their clothes. That's a kind of a hard one, but you can see his torso, right? This is actually a cool one. So two ways you can use this image or more than two ways, but two ways I'm gonna tell you, you can cut him out and use him in a collage. Or you can tear out this whole page and find a cool image. And this, this style of collage is easier with an X-Acto knife. So if you happen to have one and you wanna use it, great. Um, just trying to find something great. Oh, that would actually be funny. So, and maybe I cut this out, right? And then I cut away either just his tank top with an X-Acto knife, I cut that out and I put this cheese behind there, <laughs> this cheesy sandwich thing, right? So now his tank top is made of food and you can go any direction with that. Or you leave this part and you cut away that silhouette of his body with his jacket and then put an image behind. And that's like the easiest clause. You pretty much cut away something and then you're just putting something behind it and you're done. You've just transformed that image into something completely different. Um, and sometimes I don't like it to be an identifiable person. So sometimes I'll replace their head. Um, there are rules about how much of an image from a magazine you need to change it in order to make it legal. And I think that is 60%. Um, so you have to make it 60% your own. But look at that cool letter. That could just be a cool shape, right? You don't have to think of it as an O. Anyway, so go through your magazines, pick out three to five pages per one. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about different styles of collages um, while you do that. So we saw the ones I made. I like to call them Franken um, people. So like, I kind of like that glass as a body. And since this is a style of collage, I haven't made them in a while, but I used to make them all the time. When I look at magazines, my brain is already knowing what kind of inventory I'm looking for. Like this is a cool shot. That could be somebody's clothing, right? If you cut away their clothing. And the cool thing is when you're done, you actually have 10 pages, right? Or however many you ripped out, you get double because there's two sides. Oh, those are just so cool. All right. I'm moving too slowly. It's gotta go fast. When, when, when an image strikes you, you know, and you stop and you'll tear it out. 
So Peggy, are we just going through looking for images we like? Yep. And okay. then you can you will definitely find something to make with it. And you know, I've already got five from this one. So I'll just move quickly. And then if I see one I like, I'll replace it. Like I like that better than her. All right. Because you don't want to have too many choices. That's really kind of makes it harder. And that's when you start thinking. And so you just want to make sure, oh, so many good images, that you're not, you know, the, this isn't about looking at a magazine. This is about finding some cool images. Something that speaks to you. All right, done with magazine one, moving on. Yeah, so I got a bunch of bird and bloom magazines lately, which inspired a whole project. And I have a whole project with watches too, but that's not today. But when I get this magazine home, I will be tearing those out. And then when I'm really bored, I sit and cut them out completely. So then I just have a box full of watch faces. Like that is such a cool thing. Oh, that's a good one. All right. See, fashion magazines are sometimes scary because there's too many good images. And I try not to get ones with the um, perfume things. Like these all have them, but I've, they've been uh, airing out for a long time. But oh my gosh, why, why? How do they think that they're gonna sell me um, perfume when I can't identify your perfume because it's combined with all the other perfumes in the same magazine? I, I do like this magazine, but I am not finding things for today. I'm seeing lots of stuff for future projects. He's kind of cool. All right, so this one reminds me of something, right? So another way you can play with an image is scale. So like, what if you have a village of a picture of a town and then you put a giant picture of a bird in there, right? It's way bigger than the buildings, doesn't fit, but that makes it interesting. Um, so you can mess with scale, you can, add and replace things. Um, even just like some of these people, right? You can just, without even cutting them apart very much, you can turn them into something else and do the Franken, Franken creatures. And like that hair, that hair is amazing. Oh, I like that person. Oh, that person's in better. What do I got? One, two, three, four, five. All right, I think I'm just gonna stop there. We're gonna say that's done. That takes a lot of restraint. I gotta tell you, I am not this good when I'm all by myself. All right. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Wish this pattern back in the background wasn't covered with stuff. Wired always has the, ooh, that's, see, look at that. That is an interesting image. I have no idea what, oh, it's just fabric. So cool. See, and then that's cool. All right. How are you all doing? Are you finding images you like? I kind of like her head. And those poke. All right, done. Let's see. Got one, two, three, four. Yep. Oh, did good. All right. That book there. All right. So now I'm just going to look through the pages I tore out, and I'm going to look at both sides and see if I see anything. Like I, I'm going to identify that as a background. Like that's very cool and it's very artistic all by itself so i'm definitely going to need to alter that she is interesting and i like her head like what if we put a different head on that person um i like these women they're pretty funny like i like her she's great she's telling a story right she's laughing they're all hanging out knitting i love that scene um and that's some people so i got three people another person and yes, that's a person, but I don't see a person. I see something very groovy with this hair. So he's going over there as a texture 
another person. I have maybe too many people, but that's all right. All right. Okay, so I am, I am going to make a Franken person first. And maybe that is all I'll make because it's getting on with time. All right, so how I'm gonna do this, and I'm not gonna overthink it. This is not going to be a masterpiece. This is just to play and have some fun. But I really like this martini, Cosmo, whatever it is. It looks delicious, I wish I had. It. Um, and you don't have to be fussy. It doesn't have to be perfect. I used to think it always had to be perfect. It doesn't. So sometimes, you know how you'll get a picture of a person. Oh, here's a great example. This counter space, you wanna put her over a colored background. You're just like, Ugh, I don't have my exacto knife. I don't wanna cut that space out. Meh, meh. Who cares? Put something over it. When you're really working on a collage for yourself, anything goes, right? You can go back into your scraps and you can like add stuff to cover up the parts you don't like. Put a big giant flower right there, you know, alter it. You're probably gonna cut her arm off anyway, right? And give her a new arm, so who cares? Um, and who cares if there's a hand still there, right? You put a different arm here and it goes out over here and that's where you put the flower. So collage is all about covering up things that you don't want people to see. And you saw, I just cut that twist right off. I wasn't gonna cut all around it. I don't want the twist. And I might not want the, the foot of this stemmed glass, but I'm gonna cut it out for now. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are all human and we are all flawed. And so therefore, no matter how hard we try everything we make is slightly flawed. So stop fighting it and go with it. Whoops. All right. Okay, we're gonna put that like that. Because I kind of feel like he needs to be. Yeah, and so look, here's a great example. I don't feel like dealing with his arm at all. Amputating him. Sorry, dude, it's how it goes. And the cool thing is like, he's got an ear and stuff. I'm gonna chop it off. I don't feel like being that fussy right now. So sometimes in my collages, if I'm just playing, especially like in my sketchbook, I will do that, right? I didn't cut him out great. And maybe he needs, maybe he's wearing, oh, actually, look at that. I'm gonna cut him here. You know, I even need that part of him. We're cutting the stem off. See, so you just keep playing until something starts to happen. Oh, he's like an umbrella. I want him now to be like an umbrella for somebody else. And who knows, maybe I won't even make a finished collage because I really like her as well. So I've got some starts there. And I wonder, yeah, so like, I don't like that foamy part now. So I'm just going to cut that away. So now it's like a lamp. He is a lamp. He is the finial on the top of a lamp. All right. <clears throat> what else do I got? Oh, this looks fun. So let's, let's cut something he can be on. Um, and just because like these drops are going one way doesn't mean I have to use them that way. So now I can go. Oh, all right, cut this piece a little bit. I'm gonna start just gluing stuff down to see what I got. 
And as a collage person, if you end up doing this on a regular basis, you'll end up with like pieces of paper all over your house. Little bits of paper. I stopped fighting it and I'm like, okay, my whole house is my studio, so it's okay. Because when I was cutting my paper snowflakes, I was sitting on the couch. Well, that kind of made a mess. I probably still have bits of paper snowflake on the floor. <laughs> my neighbor likes to tease me and he's always just like, you're not expecting any company. I'm like, shut up. All right. Now I don't remember how I did that. I thought it was going the other direction. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's right. All right. All right, so I'm gonna cut that there. And here's a little trick. So that paper has a little edge and I wanna cut that top off. So I just ran my fingernail along the edge. So I kind of know where to cut that. Not that that's that important, but. And I have no idea what I'm doing. That's the beautiful thing. But one thing I know is I'm having fun. And I'm really impressed. I haven't had to cough. Now that I've said that, I'm probably going to have to cough. So usually when I'm working and I just put a bunch of glue on the back of this and it's going to stick to my little cardboard I put down. But usually I work with um, the label backing from labels underneath my surface because it's got a slick surface and so things don't stick to it as well. Um, so yeah, more garbage that I save, but that's mostly because I want it to have another life before it goes in the garbage. Um, all right, so that's like a table. I don't know what's going on with it, but I thought those things going in different directions was more visually interesting. And now we're gonna put him on the table. And the only reason this makes it a linear collage is because I'm using imagery, which will make some sort of representational um, image. So it's pretty much like what realism would be in uh, painting. Um, but I, I don't know if you can call collages realism. Maybe you can. I think you could probably call them whatever you want. But um, I really love making non-objective abstract collages and these kind of fun and wacky um, linear collages. And actually for Siren Nation once, I, um, I helped with Paint Your Art Out. I was one of the artists and I had people come by and pick things out of my collage box um, that I would add to the collage I was working on during the, the event. That was kind of fun and interesting. It was definitely a challenge. Sometimes people would come back to check to make sure I used their piece. And I was like, oh, I haven't gotten to that one yet. I was making my brain hurt. <laughs> All right, so now he's a lampshade. Um, I don't know where that one's going. I'm gonna start a new one. And that's the good thing. Like I don't have to make it go anywhere. Oh, good. It's still clean in this room because we don't use it that often. My blue stick fell, but nothing gross got stuck to it. All right, I really like her. I am going to, this is what I'm going to do. So there's several ways you can do it. I am going to cut her out, but I'm going to put her right over the top of this cool paper. And I'm going to put her like this. It's not going to be perfect because it will slide around and I don't want to glue them together. Because so I'm going to replace her jacket with that cool pattern. And I don't have an X-Acto knife, so I'm just going to wing it. And yeah, I'm gonna cut her head off because I'm gonna replace her head, but I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a neck <laughs> that I like to do. So kind of like torturing her face a little bit with my scissors. 
Yes. Yes. It's Haley. Hi there. <laughs> the weather. It's Haley. Oh. I don't even know what it's like outside. I'm stuck in this room with no windows. All right. So now I've just changed her outfit. And I'm going to give her a new head. So now if I did have an X-Acto knife, I would probably, um, oh, like, actually, I can just go. Yeah, I can just cut her hand off now. And still use it. And I am not going to get that fussy because that's a lot of little in and out cuts to make right now. I would go back and do it, though. All right. So her hand, let's see, look at me. I can use this as a cheat. All right. So, cause I don't want to lose that positioning, although I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, I am going to glue her down slightly. I think I will fix that later. Okay, just so it doesn't lose the place, we're gonna give her a head with a different direction. <clears throat> and maybe I will cut out the V. Now that I'm seeing it doesn't quite look like a jacket. Right. Cool, so now I can put something fun behind there. She's got a hand. Maybe I give the stripes or, ah, there was a map. I know I saw a map. Oh yeah, she is gonna wear a map. And I'm gonna use that glass as my little guide. And I don't need to make it the right shape because it's just gonna be behind. Hopefully I made it long enough. Yes. Cool. And I wanna give her this head. And it's kind of fun sometimes to just cut hair kind of crazy. All right, cut the head out. And where did my jacket go? Here we go. Put the hair over the top. See, and this is where it gets fun with the layering. You can like layer your pieces together. So I didn't glue her down yet, but there we go. I've completely altered that. Um, she needs different eyes though. What do I got? Oh, I know, I got something. I'm gonna give her one of these as an eyeball. Let's see. And sometimes it's nice to do it this way because like, I'm gonna be honest, when I sit down to make one of these, I will pretty much spend the entire time I've allotted myself in this studio looking for the pieces. I'm getting a little better at organizing all the pieces. Like I have a bin now that's like body parts, um, which I'm sure whoever comes to my house to like look through my studio is gonna wonder what's going on. <laughs> I also have a bin for doll parts, but um, anyway, see, look, and now give her that as an eyeball. She is Lady Luck. I feel like she needs a hat. I don't know if I grabbed anything that would work as a hat. 
probably that lamp that I already made would have been good. Oh, although I kind of want to save his hair for something good. He's got great hair. Um, okay, this is where we get to say anything goes, right? I used to kind of feel like I need one last little piece. I'm going to look at the other sides of all my pieces, make sure I'm not missing out on something fabulous. Hmm. Ooh. Actually, maybe she just needs tinier eyeballs. Sometimes I just like to go I mean, it's a collage. I'm not trying to fool anybody, right? They're not, they're gonna know. Those aren't her eyeballs. Why, why does it have to be perfect? Oh yeah, I like it. And I'm gonna leave this little tail out here. Then maybe her lady luck piece can balance it and I might need another one. Oh, like I say, I love having all these like torn up pieces of paper and cut up stuff because um, as a crazy person, <laughs> I will use these pieces and I lost that one with the things on it. Um, oh, here they are. Um, I will use like some of the cooler cutout ones. Like this is a cool shape. Um, and I'll put that on my gel plate to mask out stuff. I mean, why waste that, right? Um, I do sometimes just recycle the stuff. I sometimes just say no. But the cool thing is if I put this side down on the plate when I'm making my prints, the words will stick. So like the darker inks will stick to the plate and then you can make an impression of it. So it's kind of cool. And I like to use those in my collage stuff too, um, of course. So let's see if this coin is cool because it's like on its side. So it'll add some depth. And I just like made Lady Luck. If she shows up by your side in Vegas. Do not shoo her away. There we go. And I didn't glue any of that down yet, but I will later. Ta-da, oh, upside down here. Let's flip it. Oh, I kind of like it shifted. She's got two nostrils, set of nostrils. I think that's a little too crazy. Whoa, my fingers are sticky. All right, how did all of you do? I am excited. How did we do? It's only 238. That's not too bad. Peggy, that was so great um, being able to watch your creative process. And thank you for talking through a lot of that while, while, while you were doing it. Um, I know there's a lot of comments of people saying thank you and they love how, um, how creatively freeing uh, uh, that process is. So people are really oh. enjoying it in the comments. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's not hard. It looks harder once it's all put down, but doing it is pretty easy. Now I've given you all my secrets. I have to kill you all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Did no, anybody want to share their? Does yeah. anybody want to share their collage on camera? I can spotlight you if you uh, if you want to show it. I hope somebody, at least one person. Come on, look. I made this. This is not anything super. <laughs> but sometimes. Oh, here we get one person. Uh, I can show if you like. Oh, yay! I like. Very cool. I like it. Thank Thanks, you. Margaret. You're welcome. Thanks, Peggy. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh. Gloria, is that what I see? Oh, that's awesome. Beautiful work. Oh, it looks like you had a lot of freedom with tearing. See, I've got another one. Oh, awesome. I wonder if I have to clean this mess up before tomorrow morning. Oh, that's great. Who is this person showing? With you. the frog. Ovi. Oh, good, uh, awesome. Hi. Yeah, Orchidia. how's it going, Orchidia? Good to see you, thanks for joining. I love your piece. 
Oh, Gloria, that's beautiful. You made some amazing stuff. That's like a lot of paper you glued down. That's awesome. Well done. Oh, yeah, you all make me so happy. I'm inspired. I'm going to go home and do some more. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's really powerful piece. Who is that? That is Sally. Nice, Sally. You're muted, Sally. <laughs> I love it. It's really good. Yeah, and if any, oh, look at that, Julia, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I didn't get my, uh, the last part, anything glued, but I had fun. This is from the snowflake. Yeah, yeah, I recognize it. That's awesome. It's so freeing and it's got so much movement. Oh, look at that. Did you shut off our camera? I love the negative shapes you've got going on. That's so cool. Oh, thank you all for sharing. Your work inspires me. Like I am constantly being inspired by others. Look at that, that's so cool. Yes, that looks like a Rorschach ink one. You used your shapes to make a cool mirrored pattern. I like it, Judy, well done. Thank you. And is that a security envelope? What was that? What are you asking? The black uh, looks like circles or something. Was that? Um... It was, it was uh, the inside of a, a an envelope. Oh, that's what I thought. Awesome. I love those. I have way too many of those. Oh, that's yeah, beautiful, see, Pam. Inside of an envelope. <laughs> nice. And then this was my other one, which I just kept adding and adding to it. That's exactly the plan. That's perfect. Thank you, Judy and Pam. I saw yours. That's great. Oh, I love that one too. Does she have a watermelon body? <laughs> Thanks. That's awesome. It's a uh, sushi. Oh, sushi. sushi. Oh, even better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fun one. I like those shapes. I like the pattern papers together. Bonnie, thank you for sharing. And thank you. if folks don't mind, I would love to take a, um, a quick screenshot and everyone who feels like holding up their collage, please hold up your collage and let me make sure I can get the whole thing. Oh, hold one up. What do I have to hold up? Where am I? I'll just hold up a piece of paper. <laughs> I don't know where my clothes are. They are. Mm. Mm. Wait, sorry. Hold. I'm not. I'm not getting my thing. Here we go. Mm. 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 Lovely. Excellent. Wow, great work, everybody. Yes, thank you all for coming. And if you do post anything mm -hmm. on Facebook or Instagram, uh, the hashtag is the same as the handle. So if you would love to follow me I would love it uh I'm at collage with Penguin. I'm also at funhouse art but one account's fine um I don't know why I decided to have too many accounts for all my different art but I do all the collage at collage with penguin and if you uh hashtag me or at least uh use the at symbol that'll all get tagged in it and I can find it easy because I would love to see what you're doing and if I ever do these again in the future if you want me to have your email address, you can message me through Instagram and I'll put you on the list. I definitely do not spam you. I think I've sent out one email the entire time I've had my collage uh, workshops started. Um, but yeah, can... I hope to do them again in my house. And when you come uh, to my house, all the supplies uh, are given to you. So you just show up and you can have fun and you don't have a mess at your own house. That's kind of nice. <laughs> And you can find um, Siren Nation at sirennation.org. And we have links to Peggy's Instagram and Facebook page on the event page for this workshop. And if you know anyone who wasn't able to make it, or if you want to watch, rewatch any part of the workshop, we will be posting it on our YouTube channel. Um, and there's links to that on our website as well. Awesome. Yes, and Siren Nation is amazing. If none of you have ever participated in any of their events, I highly recommend that once it's a live festival again, and also check out what they're doing without being live. They've been keeping it together and it's amazing. I was on the board for a very short period of time as a uh, art show coordinator person. And I've also done a bunch of printing for them. I have pretty much been part of the team in some aspect 
since the early days, since and it's and been you like helped what, us, you helped us make this banner. Yes, and the banner is I helped. Uh, I didn't design it, but I had it produced for them. And uh, yeah, I have been a big fan of what Siren Nation is doing from the first festival, uh, and the entire board deserves a great round of applause for giving women artists of all walks of life um, a, a voice and a venue. So thank you. Oh, we appreciate that. And we appreciate you, Peggy. Thank you so much. This was really inspiring. And um, I know I'm going to go back and watch parts of the video again and try some of these collages myself. I love the, um, the I, just the spontaneity of it was so great. Very creative. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, everybody. Right. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Go make art. <laughs> yes, make lots of art and share it. Thank you so much. This was fabulous. Oh, it was yeah. fantastic, Peggy. Thank you. I just want to tell everyone the next Siren Nation event of Siren Nation Speaks is December 5th, and it's poetry. So come back and tell your friends. Yes, thank you, Tave. That's one of our other board members, Tave. Thank you for the reminder. Thanks everybody. This has been so great. Bravo. Thank that you. Wonderful. Yes. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Siren Nation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.